Hello friends, we have started discussing gibberellin phytohormone. We have already discussed discovery of gibberellin, its structure, then physiological effects. We also discuss about biosynthesis of gibberellin. In this video, we will discuss about gibberellin signaling pathway. So now let us see gibberellin signaling pathway. We have already discussed that in plants, gibberellin regulates seed germination, leaf expansion, stem elongation, flower induction and seed development. So now the question comes that how gibberellin regulate these physiological functions? It is brought about by gibberellin signaling pathway. Like all signaling pathways, gibberellin signaling pathway also has certain key components. Let us discuss them one by one. First is ligand. It is signaling molecule. Here it is gibberellin. Second is receptor which binds with ligand. Example GID1. It was first identified in rice and the full form is GA insensitive dwarf 1. It is soluble receptor. In Arabidopsis, there are three orthologs of GID1. At GID1A, B and C. GID1 have high affinity for bioactive gibberellins. These bioactive gibberellins we have already discussed. You can refer my video. Gibberellin binds to a specific binding pocket on GID1. Now third is transcription factor. It helps in transcribing necessary genes. One of the example of transcription factor is PIF phytochrome interacting factors. These negatively regulate light signaling and are strong promoters of elongation growth. Fourth is repressor. It suppresses the ability of transcription factor to enhance gene transcription. Hence, these are repressor of plant development. That is, these repress seed germination, seed growth, flowering, etc. Here the repressor is Della protein. In rice it is SLR1 and in Arabidopsis it is GAI and RGA and the effect of repressors are reversed by gibberellin. So we can conclude that Della proteins are class of nuclear proteins that act as regulators of transcription and suppressors of gibberellin signaling. So how it functions? It functions by stopping binding of transcription factor to DNA or by promoting their degradation. So now let us discuss how signaling takes place. There are two situations. First situation when gibberellin is absent. In the absence of the gibberellin, no gibberellin comes and binds with this receptor GID1. Hence this Della protein which is inhibitor binds to transcription factor and prefoldins. As a result of which, these are not able to transcribe genes. So, signaling is off. Let us understand this with the help of figure. Gibberellin is absent. No gibberellin binds with receptor. Hence, this Della protein binds with the transcription factor. This transcription factor is not able to transcribe genes and hence we say signaling is off. Now the second situation when gibberellin is present. When gibberellin is present it binds with GID1 that is receptor which in turn binds with Della protein. So now this Della protein does not bind with transcription factor and prefoldins. They are free. They are able to transcribe genes and hence we say signaling is on. Let us understand this mechanism in detail through this flowchart. Gibberellin binds with GID1 that is receptor. This binding results in the interaction between GID1 and Della protein. Hence it forms GA GID1 Della complex. And this complex formation results in changes in structure of Della protein. Now Della protein is able to bind to F box protein. This F box protein 
catalyzes addition of ubiquitin to DELA or ubiquitination of DELA. This ubiquitination of DELA enables degradation of DELA protein via 26S proteasome. Due to the degradation of the DELA protein, transcription factor is free or it is released. Now this transcription factor is able to transcribe genes or we can say that signaling is on. Let us understand this with the help of figure. Gibralin binds with GID1 which then binds with DELA protein. So GA, GID1, DELA complex is formed which then enables DELA to bind with F box protein. Here it is SCF1. This F box protein catalyzes ubiquitination of DELA. Due to the ubiquitination, now DELA is degraded by 26S proteasome. So it is degraded. As a result of which, now the transcription factor is released or it is free. Now it is able to transcribe genes and hence transcription or signaling is on. Now let us understand binding of gibberellin to receptor and how gibberellin GID1 DELA complex is formed. C3 hydroxyl on gibberellin makes contact with tyrosine 31 in GID1 binding pocket and this causes changes in GID1 structure. This change in GID1 structure causes a lid on the GID1 to cover gibberellin binding pocket. And when gibberellin binding pocket is covered, it results in the exposure of surface which enables the binding of GID1 to DELA proteins. And in this way, gibberellin GID1 DELA complex is formed. So this is all for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.